actually was looking top 10 most dangerous cities in the world. Five are in Mexico by murder rate. But crazy enough, one is in US, St. Louis, Missouri, number 10. So you have like five, almost all of them are in South America. So you have like eight of them, I think, are in South America. It's interesting. I can't, I have a hard time believing that's true because I know Africa has some crazy high crime rates, but we got a, we got a fucking monster coming. So you've been around a lot, you've been around Scandinavia a lot. Yeah. But what is your favorite Scandinavian country and especially city? Hey, the way I think about Scandinavia, it's, if you count the Nordics, let's include Finland, they're basically one state in America, like California. So you have about, if you count Finland, I think you have about 30 million people. So to me, all of the nordic countries it's more like changing cities like when i'm in la i can go to palm springs i can go to you know san diego um i can go to santa barbara so like stockholm you can drive you take the train there i would say the cultural difference copenhagen here danish people they're closer to other countries so they're a little more open in terms of like open to outsiders but ironically they have the least they let in the least amount of immigrants so it's a <laughs> it's not exactly uh easy to understand then you have sweden especially stockholm has its own special culture that's not even related to the rest of sweden like stockholm is kind of the new york city so it's like a little more fast paced definitely a little more materialistic not much but you'll see occasional Ferrari or Lambo. You won't see that in Copenhagen. You can't show. I walk everywhere. Then Oslo is like kind of like Denver, Colorado. It's like people who like to go outdoors, skiing, mountains. And they're considered a little more like the country rednecks. Then you got Finland, which Scandinavians don't even consider them Scandi. They consider the Finnish just kind of weird because their language is different. And Finnish people are the most shy people probably in the world. Also the most blondes. Something like 90% of people are naturally blonde and 90% have blue eyes, it's crazy. So Finland's its own, almost, it's just like, it's like a city state. Basically one city, it's like, it's like Uruguay. You have Montevideo, which like everybody lives in one city, you know? Here comes the, they have very funny, compare these to American police. <laughs> They're not as aggr Americans are aggressive. Here they come. What's going on? So yeah. So I like Finland too. It, Finland has the best steak I've ever had in the world. There's a place I think it's called. Uh, I'll remember the name in a second. In Helsinki, it's crazy. The best steak I've ever had. Now Denmark has food culture. So out of in the last 20 years, if you do the last 19 years. America's only one number one restaurant once. Uh, New York, New York City. What's the name of the place? I'll remember in a second. French Laundry in yeah. uh, Napa Valley. No, but that was 20 years ago. So I say, if you do it the last 19 years, it's you got New York one. The restaurant in New York won one time. Scandinavia won six times. No other. I mean, Denmark. Sorry, won six times. Copenhagen, Noma, and Geranium. So incredible restaurants. Like the highest concentration probably in the world of fine restaurants. And it's not that expensive. It ain't cheap, but you could go to a Michelin one or two stars for like 300 bucks a person. And in LA, a two, I mean in US, a two Michelin star or UK is gonna be double or triple. So uh, Stockholm is really good for business and tech. I had an office there, you got Spotify there. You know, you have some of the big Klarna's there. You got these huge tech companies that come out of there. Minecraft, some Sweden, a lot of video gaming stuff. Whereas Copenhagen dominates because Legos, you got Legos, <laughs> that's a pretty well-known brand. You have Maersk, which is like basically the biggest merchant shipping company in the world. They got rich during COVID too. And then of course you have Nova Nordisk, Ozempic, that's Danish. 
So the family that owns, I mean, it's not just one family, but it's a wealthy family right here. And then Norway, Norway actually, you know, Norway is almost the richest country in the world because they cut a, a deal with Denmark and took some of the offshore drilling away from Denmark. And uh, they got this huge oil shelf. So they have a multi, they have a $1.5 trillion sovereign fund. So Norway is this crazy rich place. That's just, that's cross here. Has some of the most, watch yourself though. It's also Copenhagen has the second most bikes in right around the city after Amsterdam. So you got a lot of bike culture, very healthy. All the Scandinavians, there's one gym you can go to called Sats. Or in Finland, it's called Elysium, but it's the same place. The most in shape people, like the average person compared to an American, is mind blowing. Also, of course, Scandinavia is famous for the best looking people in the world, which you can argue. But uh, if you study economics, there's something called thick markets. And um, Scandinavia is a very thick market of shockingly pretty people. Whereas America, for example, is like a thin market. You have 300 million people, and or 330 million. I would say there's more here, 30 million people. There's so it's a tenth of America. There's 10 times more shockingly good-looking people. They say the men are good-looking. I don't quite look at the men, but the women. <laughs> but I've had like my cousin. She came, and she's like. I've never, she's like, I knew I wasn't in America when I landed at the Copenhagen airport. She's like, good God, where am I? I said, B by the way, America in most countries would be better looking if people exercise. <laughs> Believe it or not, your face gets all fucked up, distorted. If your body fat gets all whack, either too skinny or too fat, you're, it deforms your face. So, I, you know, America and a lot of the, like, UK, UK is getting super high levels of morbid obesity and stuff so that's one big difference then of course scandies have this shy culture they have these words like yanteloen yantelagen yanteloven depending on which country but it all means the same thing law of yo of yanta which means don't try to show off don't consider yourself better than other people so that's why i said you I always have my american friend i know american guy moved to scandinavia he's like got a lamborghini big gold chains. I was like, bro, no woman's gonna go on a date with you. Sure enough, after like a year, he's all depressed. He's like, only Russian girls will go out with me. <laughs> I'm like, ain't no scanty girl ever going out with a dude. She's embarrassed what her friends will say about you. So it's actually a good place to be like humble. Like when I wanna be famous, I go back to Beverly Hills. You get a little taste of the influencer life and people wanting pictures with you. That happens to me in Scandinavia, but they're not, it's not the same, you know. Um, I always say, when I wanna be happy, happiest, I go to Scandinavia. When I be more peace, most peace, I go to um, my farm. And when I wanna make money, I go to LA. So, it's a good rotation. You have different cities or different locations naturally push a certain vibe into your mind. Here, you know, Denmark, I, I co-wrote a paper with Satoshi Kanazawa. He's a, he's a professor at London School of Economics called Dan Why Danish People Are the Happiest on Earth. I would actually say that Danish are the most sad, it depends, the word happy is a complicated word because it's perceived, I wouldn't say Brazil is the most joyfully happy people. I would say Danish are not that joyful. They don't walk around smiling and laughing as much, unless they're drinking. But I would say Danish are the most, and Scandies are the most satisfied happy. Most Danish people, they don't want to, they don't want a green card. They don't want to move to California, but they like to go visit. They consider it like a reality shit show. They're like, oh, let's go <laughs> see what the hell's going on in America. So Danish are very satisfied. And also, they're very social. The average Danish person belongs to, depending on which statistics, sell seven to 12 social clubs. In US, people zero, maybe their church. So I tell people you should join more social clubs. People here are like part of like 
the bird watching club, the bicycle club, the swim, you know, they cut a hole in the ice and jump in the water in the winter. They're like the cut a hole in the ice club. It's actually very genius because human, most of human happiness comes out of social connections. They're pretty family oriented, although they're not having enough kids, if I can be so bold. I know that's a controversial thing, but the countries that have the natural resources to support a higher population, I was asking ChatGPT, Denmark could easily, on its farmland, support you know almost double the population. I understand why they don't want to do it because they think it's not globally responsible. But really, country the right the problem is the countries that shouldn't have more kids are having tons of kids because they don't have the resources to feed them. So Scandinavians have very, some of the lowest birth rates is like obviously South Korea, but Finland's crazy low. You gotta be at 2.1 for replacement. A lot of these countries are at 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, it's a big problem. So, you know, birth control super. Everybody, all women here going, most women go on birth control super young. And women here, it's in a way, Scandinavians, they consider themselves the most feminist. It's a different kind of feminism, though. I don't, you know, there's radical feminism that America has. The feminism here is more like my grandma. My grandma was a feminist in the sense that, you know, she was smart. She came to America. It was the men in the family stayed in Germany and most of them got killed. So my grandma believed women were smart. But my grandma was also, you know, my grandma didn't mind the fact that she gave birth and raised the kids, you know? So Scandinavia is kind of like that. It's, guys are a lot of times like, oh, I've heard it's too feminist. I'm like, well, you don't always have to pay for the date. <laughs> you don't have to worry about gold diggers because there's very little gold diggers here in Scandinavia because women have enough money that they're not dying. If you look at the, it's called the Jenny Index or the Gini Index, which is like corruption, but also there's indexes that look at the prosperity between the wealthiest and the poorest. Scandinavia has one of the healthiest ratios. And so places like Philippines, you know, where there's a crazy, you got crazy disparity between the richest Filipinos and the poorest, and it ends up causing a lot of problems. Even for rich people, they say rich people are actually happiest where the disparity between the rich and the poor isn't too big. So for example, I go to Brazil, if you're too rich, a lot of billionaires leave because they get kidnapped or their family kidnapped, you know? So actually richer people would do better off. You know, and this is a little controversial. Scandinavia is slightly socialistic and you know, I'm more of a capitalist, but their version of socialism works pretty well. Um, they're not communists. There's a lot of capitalists here in terms of there's dudes who get rich to found. We just walked by Joe and the Juice. That's a fr my Danish friend's friend started that. He's obviously super wealthy, by the way. Don't fall in. They don't have these things on the side. I don't know. Most places, they're just these whole. I don't know how people don't fall in that shit. Danish get so drunk at night and magically no one ever falls in those that I've ever seen. But um, anyway, so like, you know, the socialism here they have high taxes, but they actually use the money for you. In America, you pay high taxes and you're like, wait a second, I get nothing. 50% 50, uh, 50 of taxes in America are paid by the ultra wealthy. So, or even more, I forget what the exact ratio. But here, everybody kind of pays somewhat equal taxes. Obviously, richer people, they do have a graduated tax rate. But there's not this huge disparity except for a few people and it ends up working here. If you retire, if you give birth, both the man and the woman can take one year off on alternate years to like the dad to stay at home, the mom to stay at home. So they, they have it figured out. I don't know if their system would work in America because you have huge, you have too many different cultural groups and people would take advantage of it. Here is a high trust, considered a high trust society. We're walking right now. You, if you had a little sister in Copenhagen, you could go for that restaurant. Right now, what is it, one in the morning? You could have her walk across the city. The least chance of anything bad happening to anybody at night in terms of violence is Copenhagen, Denmark, and Reykjavik. It's almost not Iceland. So it, that's cool, it's a high trust society. Like I said, I don't know 
if this would work in America because it's like my Argentinian friend says. When he goes to, see, he considers, so Denmark is a high trust society, crazy high trust. You can, I actually leave my phones. I have multiple phones. Only park in the world I'll leave my phones on the grass and go jog for a mile for half hour and come back, Copenhagen. But America is medium trust society. Argentina, my best friend's from Argentina. Whenever we go to have a restaurant in the US where they have like breath mints for free, He's like, man, you can't do that in Argentina. I'm like, why? He's like, one person will grab the whole thing, <laughs> stand outside of the restaurant, sell them back. So you have lower trust countries where people don't trust each other. And so it's nice to be in crazy high trust places. You don't have to worry so much. You don't have to lock everything. You have, you have friends, you know, so you don't have to worry about them getting murdered if they're visiting you. I actually was looking top 10 most dangerous cities in the world. Five are in Mexico by murder rate. But crazy enough, one is in US, St. Louis, Missouri, number 10. So you have like five, almost all of them are in South America. So you have like eight of them I think are in South America. It's interesting, I can't, I have a hard time believing that's true because I know Africa has some crazy high crime rates, but we got a, we got a fucking monster coming. <laughs> all right, we'll wrap up here. Good to see you all. It was Our great. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow.